Hello, today I'll be showing you how to build this piston drawbridge. It's a double extender. So it lets you have a massive uh, deep moat. Uh, the bridge is 3x2 in size and the top block can be any block you want. Demonstrated here with grass, stone and even half slabs. The other major advantage of this design is that the redstone is completely separated from the moving parts. The pistons are encased in obsidian, meaning that if a creeper exploded, for example, none of your redstone would get washed away. That was an accident. So as you can see here, if you remove all the moving pieces of the bridge, there is no, there are no holes. All the redstone signals are coming through the obsidian blocks. Here is the drawbridge with all the blocks removed. So you can see all the inner workings. I'll give you a flyby um, of the redstone so all you redstone experts can go ahead and build the bridge straight away. And then I'll break down all the separate pieces with uh, some descriptions. Here we are again with uh, the bridge blocks removed, so you can see exactly what's happening. And I'll give you a quick flyby. Okay, so we have here this circuit, T flip flop. The signal from the redstone block travels around to here. Two repeaters, delay of four, comparator with an inverter up into the top block. And from this direction the signal travels to two separate pulse generators which both travel into this block. And that's all you need to know. And now for the tutorial for the bridge. If this is your moat here, three blocks wide and two blocks deep, you'll want to Mark out where the bridge is going to be. You'll need this for reference later on. And you want to dig a hole around the bridge that is uh, nine blocks wide in this direction and eight in this direction. So three out this way, three out that way, and keep digging all the way around, uh, removing the water as you go. So you'll want to block that off there and get rid of all that water and dig straight down and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done and when you finish digging your hole it should look like this so we are seven deep eight wide and nine long now we can start on the build okay so first we'll put down all the blocks we need for putting redstone on. So you're going to want to go to this block here and build straight down to find where the pistons will go. Uh, it doesn't have to be this block but if you don't understand the redstone just make sure it's that one. So that is the block that the piston is going to sit on. There are only two sticky pistons, one of them sits on top of that then you can make a hole here come back to there and you want to put these blocks down and then one block there that's where the T flip flop will go and over here we need to send a red redstone signal up so three blocks there then we'll come over here Need a block there, one there, two here, and two there. And it should look a little something like that. Moving on to the T flip flop circuit. Uh, this circuit can be a bit tricky uh, depending on which direction this repeater is facing. The circuit may just not work. Um, and you'll have to turn it around, but let's give it a crack. 
So you've got your repeater um, on no delay with a comparator onto each side, some redstone around here, and then a torch, and that's the whole circuit. Uh, you can test it with a button here, and we should see a one tick pulse out of this repeater, which we don't, so I'm going to have to turn this circuit. But if it was working, you can hold down control to place a piston here, and a redstone block on it there, and then redstone there to connect this redstone block to the rest of the circuit. But I'm going to have to get rid of this and build it in the other direction. So if like me you have to build the T flip flop in a different direction, get rid of these blocks and move the whole thing over that way like so. So it's rotated 90 degrees and it's moved across one. Uh, the reasons for which will become clearer later. And then we can build the circuit again. Like so. And give it a test. And there's our pulse. So now we'll finish with the piston, the redstone block, and the redstone that will get activated when we toggle this circuit. And now we can move on to the rest of the circuitry in this corner. We want a repeater here with four ticks and one right here, here with four ticks and a comparator here, a torch going into the comparator and then connect all of these up like so. We'll send this signal to the top of the stairs and this signal will go over to that block there. And then we can come over to this corner and finish the last bit of the circuit which is two sticky pistons Peter's in there with redstone on top, give both sticky pistons a block, put some redstone here, a repeater with max delay, and finally a torch. And that is all of the circuitry done. Okay, so we missed a little bit of redstone right here, which is very important. And now we can test the circuit. So you'll need to put a block for this signal to go into, up there, and one for that signal to go into there, and then just put two sticky pistons, like that. Now to get our button, we'll have to go up two blocks here. Button, and redstone, and let's see it go. And this is what you should see. That's what you're getting, and everything is okay. So we'll get rid of our testing stuff. And it's done. Now we'll move on to the next phase. So before we go any further, we should test that the whole thing will work with all the blocks in place. So reset it by putting that over there. These should be not extended and get your slime blocks put them under the bridge now any blocks that are going to be adjacent to the slime blocks at any time must be immovable blocks so we'll have to change these and it doesn't have to be obsidian although that's preferable because it's stronger it does have to be immovable, so you could use a furnace as well, which I'll do down here. So now the signals should still get transferred through those immovable blocks, and the slime blocks will not interact with them. We can put our test back. Like so. And see everything moving. And that is... 
your completed bridge. So before we go to the next phase you should surround the moving parts of the bridge with the immovable block of your choice and test that it still works afterwards before we move on to the next phase. So I'll be using obsidian everywhere and you want to encase it so that if water did get in it won't reach your circuits. And there we go. So now the bridge is entirely contained in that obsidian case and if we hook up our test over here you see they come up back down into the obsidian no worries. After you've done that you can move on to the next phase which would be to complete the floor or the lake bed if you will. So I'll go and do that now and I will return. So here's what it looks like with the lake bed completed and the bridge extended and as you can see it's all enclosed so if water comes in it has no effect on the circuitry but we still need to get the signal from the buttons down to the bridge controls so to do that so the redstone will be coming down like that and then down a little staircase so that wasn't there we'll put that there as well and that's how you get the signal down and you can do the same thing on this side like so and things are going to get pretty cramped downstairs now so I'll try to make it obvious what's happening just uh, try to get through here no. so the signal is coming down here like so just bring it along like this and we need to send that signal down into there but to make sure you don't get a short circuit before you connect there put a block here to stop any connection continue this along to here and you can get this signal as well and send it down like that I'm going to have to go back around and finish that and if all went well we should now be able to start the bridge from up here perfect these obsidian around here is to stop any water getting in in this direction if you want to be really safe you can put two here as well so that's how to get the signal down now you're free to uh, cover this all up with dirt and fill it with stone to get to the next stage so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we can fill in the water block on top of here and that's where we put our button and off we go so to make the water automatically refill you just need some water in here and some water in here And there you have it. 
same thing over here with the button. This is the only drawbridge I've seen that can have uh, whatever block you want on top with no slime blocks. All the slime blocks are down the bottom with the added benefit of having the circuitry protected behind obsidian in case something goes wrong so you don't lose all your circuitry. The only thing you need to do now is cover this up. You can use transparent blocks like glowstone which don't prevent the signal getting through. And maybe half slabs. Finish off with some carpet. And that's it. Give us a, uh, a like and a share if you think this is a good bridge so more and more people can benefit from this design. There is another design for doing the same bridge with no exposed slime blocks which is extendable and I'll be building one of those here next. So give it a like and uh, if, this, if this video does well you'll get that video as well. Thank you. Just a quick demo of that bridge, so you know I'm not lying. Uh, no peeking at the redstone yet, but I leave a like and I can make a video for this bridge as well, which as far as I know is uh, infinitely extendable. Thank you.